it's not uh, as visible as the translation system. It, it's mostly just backend changes. Uh, but while well, backend changes are also important, uh, I promised to speak not too much about the history of this, but allow me a few of that. So, uh, the Dropbox menu system, as uh, those who have written Dropbox code before knows it, uh, was created in 2004, September, uh, by uh, Jonathan Schaefer, when he have uh, added back uh, the caching to the old system. And uh, this system uh, back then was able to handle a lot, lot uh, things. It was able uh, to root calls, which means that if you type in a Drupal pass in your browser, uh, then uh, uh, it needs to figure out which function is going to handle uh, this call. Also also, you probably do not want to type in every URL one by one. You may want to click somewhere. So it was able to present you with a navigation menu. It also uh, provided uh, more navigation tools like a breadcrumb. Uh, it was able to do access control centrally. As we all know, Drupal has a very good security record. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that uh, the menu system has always provided a centralized access control. So if you are writing any uh, uh, page, you don't need to bother uh, with access checking for every page. So yeah, I almost forgot the title. Uh, that the menu system provides the page title uh, as well. This is just uh, simpler and logical. Because you need a title uh, in the navigation menu anyways, because you know a link has a title and a past. So if we had anyways a title, so why not reuse that as a page title? And uh, then this was the old solution. Now, uh, it was the old system stores every information about all this stuff in a huge PHP array, serializes this, and stores in the cache table for every single user. I actually read the issue back from Dan, and it was not clear why every user got one. In, there was some... Uh, talk about just providing one for every role, but this decision made the menu system extremely powerful. You basically had everything you can do with PHP at your hand because all the stuff was just a PHP array. You, there were no database constraints, there were no, 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 no problems at all. However, such huge uh, arrays to serialize and unserialized requires a lot of memory and requires a lot of time. So this became a resource drain. However, if you remember 2004, uh, we didn't have the Drupal sites we have these days. Uh, Drupal was still very small, so uh, nobody foresee uh, what's going, what happened. So the new solution. As I said, there are no uh, big front-end changes. There are some small usability enhancements in the uh, menu overview. Uh, in the old system, you had every menu on one page. Now it's, uh, you have a menu overview for each menu, and, it's, and it finally got a pager, which is pretty important because uh, there because we now uh, support tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of links in uh, one menu, although I didn't have the time to benchmark the latest uh, versions. 
I can definitely tell you that around uh, when I benchmarked it in March, it very nicely uh, stood with uh, 220,000 links in one menu. Uh, I think th that still stands. So uh, uh, I think you just can put anything in the menu now, really. Uh, I was actually testing uh, with a dump of the uh, free web directory, you know, the, op the open directory project, that's it. Uh, I, I was actually testing with that because that was the biggest uh, free uh, tree I could found. Uh, the new system, unlike the old, is very well documented. Uh, I have uh, submitted the first documentation before the first patch was in the queue and the documentation has recently been updated. The last run against the documentation has ended about uh, 90 minutes ago uh, because I wanted to make sure that if you now go to the drop, you go to dropout.org and check the handbook, then you will see everything as it's up to date. Uh, things are still easy to define as they were in the old one and unlike the old one, it's very easy to alter. In the old one, you needed to hack and hack badly. You needed to change this huge array directly. There were no API uh, to help with altering. So, uh, the new system stores everything into two database tables. I wouldn't say that they are normalized, but they are very close to that. This represents a, a fundamental change. Earlier, you had everything done uh, on runtime. Now, uh, um, the, so if you remember the old one, there you specified access just as a Boolean variable. It was either true or false. This has changed. Now you specify an access callback, which means that uh, when the entry is loaded from the database, this callback is called, and the result of this callback determines uh, the uh, accessibility of the page. Uh, this, this is probably the biggest change uh, for those who are writing modules that now you cannot have just a, a complex uh, uh, thing written for access which pulls everything and uh, returns a boolean. Instead, you have things like the user view access here. So what you do now is that you have an access callback. It has arguments. I will talk a lot more about this strange notation. And uh, well, this is the access. This is the actual access callback from core. So you still can have any complexity you just want to. You just don't write it into the menu hook. Instead, you write a separate function because it's separate. It's mandatory separate. It's much easier to understand uh, menu definition for one thing. Uh, it's much easier to maintain this. You do not, you no longer have too much logic uh, in a uh, menu implementation. The less logic you have there is the better. Still, core has a few definitions which uses uh, loops from uh, pulls data from the database, loops it and defines uh, menu items based on that. Uh, we didn't have time to remove all of them, but actually all of them ca could be removed. I will show you how. So we have the access callback. We also have a page, something uh, which is the called the page callback. We always had this. This is the, the function that actually renders the page. Uh, that's and we have a title callback. Uh, as I mentioned, the menu is providing uh, titles. 
uh, as Gabor mentioned, this is an international uh, release. So if we would uh, uh, store the title into the database localized, uh, then basically the user who was uh, running Drupal when the menu was built, her uh, locale uh, would burn into the database. That's not good. So uh, now uh, you have, uh, you just store a string and the menu automatically calls T on it. But that's not all. Uh, because you can, because that's just the default title callback, you actually can specify anything to be the title callback. I will show you an example. Uh, how cool tricks can you do with that? Arguments. Yes, I will pull out the handbook again because this is very well described in here. I. And well, so if you remember Drupal 5, you were writing things like this in the uh, not cacheable part of uh, hook menu. Uh, basically, you checked whether you are on a page you are interested in, and if you were there, then you have uh, added your menu entry, and this was not cached. Now, this is changing through, I have shown a few, st few steps there. Well, maybe I, I won't jump them. It's easier to show. So the first step to translate uh, would be, this is, of course, this is just pseudo code. Uh, that's, it's now not per person sign. The person sign is, the, is a weird card in the new menu system. Uh, it uh, basically matches everything. Uh, so you have the access callback, you have access arguments, uh, which will be something with, uh, with uh, that we are determining view of a node. Then you have the page callback, the page arguments. The page argument again needs the node. Now, how can we find this one node? Uh, we know that uh, the first argument here specifies a node, and it's a node. So putting all that together ends up in this, which is uh, the actual definition. Now you have some very strange notation there, person node. The person node means that that's, that's the first argument. So the first argument is going to be a node ID. You should call node load on it. If it would be person user, the system would call user load on, uh, on it. And uh, because these are integers, integers are replaced by the object loaded. S and this is necessary because all we store into the, we need to store something into the database. So what we store into the database is just a one. And that, and on runtime, it will take the first argument, call node load on it, and replace this one with uh, with uh, the node. These were uh, some examples. I have just shown this one. And uh, this, I don't, uh, I guess you haven't followed uh, the bug fix process of Drupal 5, but we had a lot, lot problems with the search. And uh, it was a bit hacky at the end. And we also had a lot of problems in 6. Uh, it has been fixed about 20 hours ago. Uh, but, it, but it is now fixed. This is now code from core. The, big, uh, there the problems are here is 
that if you search on something like foo slash bar, then it's going to be two uh, arguments. If you uh, search on foo slash bar slash something, then it's three arguments. You just can't tell how many arguments you will have, so we cannot use uh, that very simple notation of simply putting a two or a three I into the path. Now, what we can do, on the other hand, is to define something like search, user, person, menu, tail. But the other uh, usage of person, something, for local tasks is that it, it's basically the pair of loading. It's something which is called to arg. So the full function is going to be called menu tail to arg. And what it does is it takes foo slash bar slash something and it, ret and it renders them as if it would be just one argument. So this will end up with the search tabs uh, pointing uh, to, the to just the correct places. So you have, mm, I hope I have search module one. Yep. Don't worry about the, the uh, error messages. This is my development uh, Drupal. So you have this for the content tab. Oh, sorry, you cannot see that. That's a problem. Let me see whether I can do something with it. Mm -hmm. I guess now you can. So, draft. It says uh, search node slash foo, slash bar, and uh, this one says search user, slash foo, slash bar. So the arguments, well, I can just click on it, I guess, uh, and the keywords this way are kept between the two types of search, even if you are using slashes. This was a huge challenge for search, w which means that if you uh, get arguments like search, then you probably should use this construct. And uh, we have, as I told you, this is the most complex definition we have. We have a defined title callback here, which is module invoke. As you can see, you can do basically any kind of tricks with title callbacks and title arguments. You can call anything you want to. Uh, this is going to be either search or node or OG for OG groups or anything. So it will, the, the title arguments, as you can see, these are constants. And because these are constants, you can store them into the database. Uh, when, you st when you call in a search page, it's going to call this search hook and it will get the name of that search. So uh, instead of putting node, it will put out a nice content for you. What the? Get out of there. OK, the page callback hasn't changed. Uh, this is once again search. Uh, this is once again node or user. These are, these are pretty much common stuff here now. And we have a parent definition here, uh, which means I don't know who had problems with defining tabs in uh, Drupal 5 based on IRC, I think everybody. Uh, it was a little bit, it was, it was just not really understandable how things happen. Uh, because uh, there is a menu item which says search and you have a default tab for that one. In this case, search node. 
or uh, in the case of a node, you have view as the default tab. And uh, as the whole system worked, uh, the default tab was actually uh, served by its parent. This is not so anymore, but we still need to link together uh, the default top to its menu, I menu item. So this happens explicitly here. Usually you don't, don't need to do that because, for example, uh, for uh, simpler cases, it's simple uh, the uh, menu entry one level up. But here, where you can have any number of arguments, you just cannot find the default one. So this was search, and uh, well, uh, come on, yeah. The documentation it has, yeah. There is okay. I will talk a very little. I will try not to deal a lot with this because it's a bit, mm, it's quite a bit technical. But the way the system can be fast and still flexible is here. That if you have, if you want to visit that, if you want to edit that node, then these are the seven possible. Uh, passes that might have the callback for the page. It's actually no person edit. Now, we need to find that one and the, in case somebody overrides that and has a special uh, edit page for this node, then of course you want the first one. So what we do is we replace Everything which is not a person sign with a one, person signs with a uh, zero. So you uh, so you get binary numbers. I will uh, take I will uh, zoom out a little bit so that it's uh, visible on the same screen. In case I can find. Yep. I hope it's still readable. Uh, so, oh wait, I, I put the, the pass in the table recently, then that, that's great. I totally forget sometimes what, what I do. Uh, I just uh, update, as I told you, I just, what? Where did, it, where did this go? Hey. Oh, sorry, D uh, just a second, I don't know, I, I have apparently uh, closed this one. Uh, come back. Okay. So, yep. Here is the table I wanted to have, and uh, yeah. So, as you can see, you take something like this, replace totally mechanically with one, zero, one, and you need to read this as a binary number. It becomes a five, and th this will give you an order of the passes. Uh, this uh, is how uh, the new menu system finds what, uh, what the menu item is going to serve the page. This, this, is a, a very this is a very good trick. And recently, uh, Peter Wolanin, who have written about half of this, he was a great, he was a big half, 
uh, has added a very cool trick that, for example, if there are no passes which would read a four, then that's not even examined. This is not a big deal for three long passes, but if you have seven long, uh, then it would need to uh, examine, uh, uh, I think, uh, 127 possibilities uh, for every page load, which would be just a little bit too much. Uh, we originally wanted to allow only six long uh, pass definitions. Uh, but now that we only uh, examine the, the possible uh, uh, masks, it's now quite feasible uh, to have uh, several long ones. And I just want to list uh, from core. So currently, uh, out of the, the past, I, uh, okay, it's not readable. Uh, so currently, uh, Drupal doesn't use um, uh, longer than six passes. So there is a possibility of 63, but we only use 20 of them. So this is basically a three times speed up. So all in all, the new menu system results in much fa being much faster than the, uh, than the old one uh, because it doesn't need to serialize and we have lots of tricks to make it faster. It doesn't need as much memory as the old one did, especially if you switch off the navigation block. The old system had no changes so even if you didn't have the navigation block, everything was loaded. Now if you switch off the navigation block, it simply just doesn't work to compare to Drupal 5 because it runs circles around it. And uh, so we have performance, less memory, and uh, as much flexibility as the old one had. And uh, or maybe even more because you are able to alter other modules definitions, which is a very popular, also a very popular question on IRC, uh, which, and it's not really feasible in, in five. So, and yeah, and I think the documentation is also very important because one of the problems with the old system was that nobody understood it after John Bob left. Uh, you know, bus factor. Somebody leaves, and you are left with code that nobody understands. There are currently two people who understand uh, the new menu system, uh, and uh, at least in totally. And I know that a few others have are understand some concepts. And because it's documented, if both of us leave the project, it will still be maintainable. This is pretty important. We are trying to learn from errors in the past. We try to make even the process scalable, not just the code. Okay, I, I think questions. Uh, the parent key is all is only for uh, the uh, tasks. However, taxonomy menu needs a significant change. It's it almost needs to be rewritten from ground up because taxonomy because we now store things in two tables. 
we have one table which handles routing the requests and we have another table uh, which is used uh, to render the navigation block. Taxonomy menu doesn't need a hook menu anymore. It needs a bunch of menu save links because it only adds links uh, to the link table. The router table is usually very small. Uh, it's, uh, it, I can't really imagine a Drupal install where it will go above a thousand. Which, because those would be a thousand different pages, on the uh, thousand different coded pages. On the other hand, as I told you, the links table can grow basically any size. We have uh, ported the book module to use the new menu system. So uh, all the Drupal org handbooks is going to be stored in there, which will be basically uh, the first big uh, trial uh, whether this really scares or not, but it does. So taxonomy menu and everything else which programmatically adds new links uh, to the uh, navigation block can add links, but that doesn't need uh, to be in hook menu. That's a whole different, that's a different function. Here. You, you see, it has. A, a, this is also partially. Uh, so now everything has very good uh, docs again. Uh, recently, in a, about the last one two years, Drish squarely refuses to commit anything which is not commented to death. So the new system is not just documented in the handbook, but even in the code, as you can see, there are uh, comments uh, basically everywhere. So uh, if you want to pour taxonomy menu, then you will call this a lot, a lot. Yes, yes. You can here definitely define uh, the parent. Because this is, you know, these are just uh, this is just the uh, the, navi the navigation menu or any other menu. This is also uh, uh, something new. You can have, uh, you can programmatically uh, put programmed links into any menu. So, for example, you can have something in the primary links if you want in hook menu, and also with menu links save, you can uh, create. Uh, any menu. Uh, in the old system, you were uh, confined to the navigation menu when you were defining stuff. This is now not so. Every, every menu is now equal. So as you can see here, via this key, it connects uh, to the router table, which, by the way, which it means that you can have a link uh, which points to just almost anywhere, and it will uh, find the correct router item anyways. Uh, this is used for uh, determining the access. Yes, this is also important, which I almost forgot to say. Uh, in the old system, uh, if you added uh, a link uh, from the menu module, then that was always visible. There was no access control of it. Now it has. It has the same, it has the very same access control, the same code runs uh, as uh, when you want to display it, when you would land on it. So if you uh, click a menu link and it would result uh, in an access denied, you won't even see the link. Uh, also, yeah, also about menu module, 
uh, you were able to enter any path in menu module, whether it existed or not. When people asked whether it's possible to say which path exists in Drupal or not, another very popular question, uh, it was just not possible to answer this because you had items which were not cached, so uh, it was not really possible to say whether if you land on a uh, path there would be something or not. Now everything is stored in the database, so you can just ask the relevant API that does this path has a relevant menu item? If it has, then okay. So menu module does not allow you to enter any path uh, which doesn't exist. I need to check whether path module allows you. If it does, then it's a bug which I will fix. Mm, because a path module also should only allow uh, to alias passes that exist. So there are a lot of uh, very cool tricks with the new menu system and uh, I strongly urge everybody who is going to port his models to try to forget the everything from the old ways because uh, it's a very different mindset now. It's a different what you can do and how should you do things. Yes. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether I understand your question, uh, but uh, in search. Yes, uh, admin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, theme. Theme, I think. Theme, I think, yes. Seems. Mm -hmm. no, none of these. Oh, I'm not logged in. That's a. Yeah. It's very hard to type one. Okay. Of course I have a one character password. This is just my development Drupal on my on laptop. Why would I need a longer ca uh, The password is X if you really want to know. <laughs> Be my guest. I, I only, uh, I only uh, throw it out uh, every uh, second minute. If you, you take a look, uh, this is a MySQL hot copy uh, which just created this database. So you know, here is the, the drop database Drupal 6 command, uh, right? Uh, so I, I'm not really phased about this database. Okay, now, now the URL is admin for Yes. 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 Why it should be admin build seems list? Admin build seems list should never be uh, displayed. Th that 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 pass doesn't really exist. Yes, a lot of stuff related uh, bugs were fixed. And now the only the last puzzle is uh, the menu update pass. Mm, which I have written yesterday. I don't know whether it's in yet because I have not seen Goba in the last hour. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh yeah, you could you could commit all three outstanding update patch patches. At least, please the big one because uh, it's now very very tiresome uh, to test anything if you need to apply three patches.
Okay. More questions? If not, then thank you. If you have questions, you can find me uh, usually on IRC in Hash Drupal. <laughs> More or less, yes. <laughs> yes? Because we know all the paths that exist, we could now build an export CPU, couldn't we? What? An export CPU would export the entire site by having the W get in the screen. And uh, this is not that easy. Uh, because just because, you know, this is not like that. Just because you can say that if I type in this path, I can determine whether it exists, that doesn't mean that I can generate all uh, possible passes. Oh, because this is the wild method. Right. Right. It's, uh, uh, you know? But you know, you know in every case what the wild method is supposed to be, so you can go and do a lot of work if you go through and get all the new drivers and get all the new ideas. Well, that would require a lot of manual work because uh, uh, you need to know what, for example, node load does or user load does. You need to connect the user load to users that you ID. So that specific knowledge that's nowhere, that's nowhere defined outside of user load, you know? Yes, you can do that. But the problem is how do you know uh, that user slash user uh, can be fulfilled by values from the users table. So you need to write most probably module specific and even more probably size specific code to do this export. Excuse me? Uh, you, can, you can just do the same thing that the menu system does to, to get at least the rendered content to export it. Yeah, but you need to know which page you want to call. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you don't know the problem with, so the, this export is not really feasible because you just don't know how to fulfill. And also, another problem with the export is the title callback. Uh, because it is ha it is not impossible to write pages that change their titles based on time. So, you know, to say good morning, good afternoon, you could do that with a time-based time uh, title callback. And then, how are you going to export that? You know, not to mention that you can have pages which are accessible in the morning and not accessible in the afternoon. Well, I, I, I'd export it twice then. <laughs> so, yeah. while we, this is an improvement, so now if you specify a page, we can't say it exists or not, but the other direction is not implemented and I don't think it's implementable at all. Um, not even, if you, not even with something like relationships in Schema API, not even then you will be able to do that because of the highly dynamical nature of the callbacks. You just, uh, I don't think this is feasible to generate every part, every page in Drawall. Uh, I don't think so. I just don't think so. Uh, what you want to basically do is to automate boost to preload the boost module, uh, I don't think that's uh, either needed or feasible. I think that's quite enough that people visit their pages, uh, boost, uh, put uh, an export uh, into its file cache, and then Apache server serves that. You basically uh, would write a hell lot of code uh, to save one page load every hour. That doesn't worth it. You, if you, okay, here is how you can uh, do a crude version of this, install boost and release a uh, widget on your site. B boost? Yeah, boost module. And, and, and do what? V w, G, E, T. Oh, yeah. Spider your site and uh, then uh, 
you will get something which is very close to a full export. So Boost that makes static files? Yes. Okay. Boost creates static files for you. These will at least export the pages that are accessible for that certain user you are spidering as at that moment. Mm -hmm. That's all you can have. Even more questions? Then I say thank you for attending. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content through if you want to build a web application, you gotta download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content. Drupal. If you want to build a web application, you gotta download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal.